uh, ladies and gentlemen, the uh, penultimate session in the academy is just about to kick off. I'd like to welcome to the stage uh, Shane Afalabi, Finance Consulting, PwC UK, and Richard Doherty, Senior Director, Product Marketing, EMEA from Workday. Enjoy the session. Thank you. I'm going to stand here. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming. My name is Shane Afalabi. I'm here with my colleague, Richard Doherty uh, from Workday. We're going to be talking to you today very quickly about the importance of winning business systems. Uh, I'm from Finance Consulting uh, with PwC, and Richard is in uh, Product Marketing at Workday. So we'll jump straight in. So what we've got on here are the common themes that we normally see across all businesses across all industries, be it the sports industry, media entertainment, uh, and also within football clubs. So at some point, you are going to need to do some kind of regulatory reporting, whether you're reporting for tax purposes to the HMRC, um, whether it's the gender pay gap reporting. And we know that within football clubs, we do have our own regulatory reporting that we need to do to UEFA, to the Premier League, uh, and other bodies that are uh, relevant in the industry. Period close is also a, a, a common theme, but also can create issues. If you don't have the correct systems in place, to close your period at the end of your accounting, uh, accounting month, where you have to do your reconciliation with your bank, so all the money that you spent at the end of the, uh, all the money that you spent during your uh, trading month, reconciling that with actually what's in your accounts uh, from a cost and also from a revenue point of view. You've got payroll commitments. You need to create some kind of pay group for your employees. You've got employees that sit within maybe a group for players, a group for your backroom staff, a group for your contingent workers. You've got human resource management commitments. You need to make sure that you have a proper workforce planning tool. In, uh, um, a workforce planning tool. You need to go through recruitment. You've got planning and budgeting um, scenarios that you might need to go through. Think about the amount of revenue that you might be getting in from this month, doing some forecasting over the next years, or some business planning. And obviously, you've got your supply payments. You've got collections from customers. Some of these themes can create issues very quickly. I'm going to hand over now to Richard, who's going to talk you through how we can mitigate some of these issues. Lovely. Thank you, Shane. Uh, hello, everyone. So I'm Richard Doherty from Workday. Can you have a quick show of hands? Who's heard of Workday before this presentation? Oh, good. So, so, so um, I'm going to introduce you to the company. But before I do that, um, let's think about some of the issues and challenges that Shane was highlighting uh, on that previous slide. Um, and I'd like to uh, uh, discuss why football clubs may be subject to a number of those issues and challenges and opportunities. And if we were to look at your um, system landscape, so the systems that you have in place to manage your business, you've probably almost certainly got lots of different systems. Okay, you may have some very old systems that you've had forever. Maybe they're you know, on-premise systems that were perhaps start, you know, were initially developed maybe at the end of last century, early this century. Um, you've added some additional systems from the cloud, perhaps. Um, you've also got lots of spreadsheets and Word documents. And you try and mesh all of these systems together. Now, and it would look something like this. So you've got your HR systems, your finance systems, and your payroll systems. Many, many systems. Now, the issue is that these systems are typically not very well integrated. So you'll have people running about in your business, moving data from one system to the other. You've got replication here. So you've got cost centers across multiple different systems. And you're having to make sure that the uh, cost centers are aligned across all of these different systems. Now, from an infrastructure perspective, what that means is, um, your business processes are quite slow. Okay? You've got teams of people running around, checking data, moving data. You've got IT specialists checking, well, hang on, hang on a minute, why hasn't that data reflect the data over there? Why doesn't it reconcile? Um, you've got a, a certain amount of redundancy. So you've got people focusing on non-value-adding activities. Okay? You're spending a lot of money just managing the data. And then finally, 
because you know not all of this data is being replicated in an automated manner, you're going to find out that actually th the numbers are different in different systems. So you'll have finance saying, well, okay, we've got 800 employees, and HR saying, no, we haven't, we've got 760. Whose number's right? Well, you don't know. And it's very difficult to operate a business when you're not confident in the numbers. And then also, um, Shane didn't highlight it in his previous slide, but GDPR, which is the General Data Privacy Regulations coming into effect next year, in May next year, where you will have to prove that you've secured your employees' data, that you have complete control over who's allowed to see that data, how it's managed. If you have that disjointed architecture, you're going to find it very difficult to prove that you're managing your employees' data in compliance with the GDPR. And the fines can be up to 4% of your turnover should you n not comply, which is a huge impact on any business. Now, what impact does that fractured IT landscape have on your operations? Well, here's some data that we've collected. So um, from a payroll perspective, you know, more than 40% of payroll's time is spent um, checking data. Are the numbers correct? Finance are spending more than half of their time just managing transactions. HR are spending 70% just administering. Okay? And these are tasks that could be automated. And you know, less than 10% of organizations are happy with the reporting that they have. Okay? Um, now, from a workday perspective, that's what we help our customers address. We help them address those issues. So we automate and we drive self-service so that payroll can focus on more value-adding activities. Same for finance, same for HR. Um, and we build up a, a much more robust reporting infrastructure. Now, how do we do that? Well, where you may have, say, 10, 15, 20 different systems today, with Workday, it becomes one system. You have one employee record, one supplier record, one, one a chart of accounts, one cost center structure. Okay, so we rip out all of that complexity, and all of the data is in one place, and it's in the cloud. Okay? Now, what's different about Workday is we're a company that was founded in 2005. Uh, we're an American headquartered company in California with operations around the world. And we have 1,500 customers, 70% of them alive. Um, we have a very, very successful track record. We have never had a failed implementation, which is unusual for a, an enterprise software vendor. Now, all of our customers, and you're going to see some of our customers in a minute, they're all using the exact same version of Workday, just configured differently to match their different needs, regardless of what industry they're in or what size they are. That means there's one user experience. Your employees will have a single app on their phone where they can access finance functionality, HR functionality, access their pay slips, one app. And that app is consumer grade, it's easy to use. Adoption rates are incredibly high with Workday. It's that one source of the truth that's important as well. All of the data is in a single system and you can report on any of that data. And Shane is gonna highlight what that might mean for a football club with some very exciting examples of the work that he's doing. Well, influenced, or uh, not the exact work he's doing, but influenced by the work he's been doing at Southampton Football Club, okay? And this is the 97%. That's our customer satisfaction rating. Most people hate their enterprise software vendors, okay? Because the software projects fail, the software's not flexible enough. We change that dynamic entirely with Workday. We have a very, very happy customer base, and I'd encourage you to reach out to any of our customers and ask them, how is it to work with Workday? And it's, uh, okay, I know I'm, I'm, I'm trumpeting how great Workday is, but it's not just me saying that. Gartner, if you're aware of them, they're an analyst uh, uh, organization. They evaluate software products for organizations like yours. And a few months ago, they brought out a magic quadrant for financial uh, management uh, applications, and you want to be in, you know, in, in the top right-hand corner, that's the leaders segment. So we're there for that, so we're one of the leaders, so we're a, a safe choice. But then also they brought, out, they brought out a magic quadrant for cloud HCM applications. And yet again, we're a clear leader. Okay, so Workday is a very robust choice for any business in terms of delivering value. And then my final slide, we work with all different types of organizations around the world. 
you know, uh, medium-sized enterprises from a few hundred employees upwards to the very largest companies in the world, like Walmart and Shell and Amazon and, and so on. So we have Southampton Football Club here. We have a Blah Blah Car, which is an interesting ride-sharing organization based out of France. Avon, you know, Ding Dong, uh, Sky Betting and Gaming. So all of these organizations are using Workday, the same application. It's like you all use Facebook, or you, well, I don't know if you do, or you all use LinkedIn. You're all using the same software, but you use it differently. It's the same with Workday. And that's why we can deploy the solution very quickly. Let me hand over now, because I've been talking too long, to Shane. <coughs> so you all must be thinking, wow, Richard, that sounds really amazing. This Workday thing must be really cool, right? You're not wrong. It is actually really cool. So. In terms of actually putting all this thing, these aspects of, of the data that we've been talking about together, on the left-hand side over here, we've got football-related data. So when we refer to football-related data, we mean things like statistics that come from Opta or the good gentleman at B-Soccer, whom I've just met today. And you've got your operational data. So that's things that come from your day-to-day -day operations of your, of your business. So your, you know, your, your get your attendance records, your gate fees, the revenue you generate from your stands, from your concourses, or from your website online. Now, because normally all of these systems are usually disjointed, what you get with Workday is you can feed all of that into the, this cloud here, represents Workday, by the way, and it's all in one. And that's what we mean by the power of one. So everything is encompassed in one system. What you're then able to get out of that are enhanced match day statistics, KPIs that your finance directors might be really interested in looking at, you also get financial insight. So I'm aware that a lot of the times we get loads of data pumped into, into the business, but you don't really know what to do with it. That's the financial insight now that we produce, leveraging the power of Workday. So what I'm going to do now, which has never been done before, by the way, so you guys are the lucky guests to be seeing this firsthand, is to actually show you a demo of how some of this stuff actually works. Uh, I'll show you three different areas of how football-related data reacts with operational data and actually what the result of all this stuff is. Uh, I do have one of my colleagues in the back room doing the uh, mouse moving, so don't be alarmed if the mouse goes a bit... A bit uh, there you go. Uh, so I'm going to start with the, f with the player dashboard. This is a fictional football club, believe it or not, Workday FC, uh, and we've pretended that they're playing in the Premier League. So what you have here in these quadrants is real-time data that's been run off a URL. So as Richard explained to you earlier, Workday is a cloud-based solution. So literally, we've gone into a website, clicked in the URL, and it's loaded all this data. And you can click on Alex Griffin for a second, who is also a fictional defender. This is actually linked to the player's HCM record. So with Workday, as I talked about integrations, you can get data from your actual core HCM platform. So normally, if you had an HR system that you, that, that, you, uh, that you implemented prior to Workday, all of that information can now sit within the Workday system. You can, yeah, if we've gone, gone back to the dashboard now, through that information that we get from this player profile, if you scroll down, You've got things like player analysis by match day. So this is actual information that we've loaded into Workday that you could have gotten from, again, an Opta statistic or, in fact, from your team sheet. So we know that at the end of the game or during the game that clubs normally send the, uh, someone out to recall the team sheet, look at the number of games, that the number of goals that they scored. And just highlighting any one of those statistics there can tell you what the data is for what game. So, for example, here, he, against Man City, or sorry, against West Ham, one assist, eight tackles, two headers. What you can then plug into this information is how he gets remunerated on a match day, because that information is also in Workday. So we know that players get appearance fees. They get match day bonuses. You can calculate all of that based on the fact that the data for match day bonuses already exists, and the data about his appearances and the games that he's played and the number of tackles he's had also exists in Workday. You can also do season analysis. And everything on that right-hand side is actually just calculated. So not only does Workday hold data for you, but it also calculates all your metrics for you. And if you scroll down, you've got things like ratios there. So this is the player's activity for the whole season. The number of games he's played, number of clean sheets, his clean sheets per match, goal contribution. So all the information is there, easily calculatable, calculated sorry, uh, by the system. Another thing you can do, 
because everything is just connected, you can actually change the player record. So if you scroll to the top, and this is my moment of glory, by the way. I've never really been a keen football player, but today I get to be one of those. So he's going to type my name in there, Shane Afalabi. There he is in all his glory. And we can do, see the exact same thing, different player, same kind of analysis. On the top right there, we've got football player valuation. And it's not uncommon for football clubs to treat their players like assets. At the end of the day, that's what the fans want to see. They've come to see the football players. Work they can treat those assets in the same way you treat a depreciable capital asset, where you can plug in the player's transfer contract as depreciable assets on the, in their own right. So for this example here, I signed a three-year contract. And then for each one of these areas, they all depreciate using a specific kind of depreciation profile. And these are the kind of financial insights, the kind of calculations, the kind of metrics that's all achievable. So here we had HCM information already in the system, data that was integrated from a third party system, data that was calculated within Workday, and financial information that you can actually enter in the system. And all of that information you can compute and make strategic decisions within the club. I'm going to show you another dashboard. So all of the, what I've just shown you now is all player related. I'll show you another one that's now specifically to do with a football game, or what we'd refer to as match day analysis. So the title of this dashboard is a football project. What you can then see here is things like match day operations. So again, this is data integrated from a third party vendor, let's say WMX, if you might have heard from them. So they would do all the attendance records. So they match or they collect data from all the gates. So when you touch in as a fan going to watch a football game, your data is collected. That's one attendee. So we can collect all that information and have it stored in Workday. What we can also do from that attendance information is also collect information from the sales we make, from our concourses, the number of tills that we had open. What can we then do? We can look at things like average queuing time or the number of transactions that you've got from a specific till on a specific match day. What you can then do is draw parallels between what was the result of my match? What were the sales implications at the end of my match? So here we've got, for example, if you scroll to the left, please, Ben, on the, uh, on the bottom one here, uh, bottom left, sorry. So you've got things like, for a single game, you can calculate how much beer was sold, for example. And if you click on that number, let's say it was 483 pounds that you sold against West Ham, if you're really interested in the financial data behind that, you can then actually look at the ledger accounts that were posted for each credit of beer that was sold. So in fact, not only are we now looking at just operational data from you know, quite a high uh, a view, but you can then drill down to actual ledger accounts. And so th this is something that you can achieve from the power of one. And this information might not be interesting to, to, your, to your scouts or, or to your operational managers, but definitely interesting to your financial analysts. So that number, for example, here, that's the amount of, of revenue that we've sold by concourse. And that same number breaks it down by stand. So you can then analyze even further. Why do we have more sales? Sorry, Ben, if you scroll down for a second. Why do we have more sales in uh, this one here, top left, with the blue, the blue quadrant? <laughs> He's pointing somewhere else. Yeah, there we go. 27.1% sold in the south stand. Is that because the south stand is closer to where we actually have our tills, where the hot dogs get rolled out? And if we're making more sales on that stand, perhaps maybe we should put more tills on that stand, which then makes it easier for us to treat more customers, to serve more customers, sorry. Uh, and if you scroll up, so this is what we also wanted to show. You can also plug in just general match day information. At the end of a match, you want to know how much possession you had against a certain team, whether the, te whether the match was shown on television or not, whether it was broadcast, whether you played home or away, how many goals were scored, how many goals were scored against. And if you actually think about it, sometimes you might think without actually finger in the air, when we win games, we sell more jerseys. Or when we win games, we sell more hot dogs. Well, now you can actually check if that's actually correct. You can do a, lo a lot more analysis now that you've got the data. So it's not really about making assumptions about where this data is pulled out from. But now you have the data to make correct analysis on the information that you already have, but you couldn't leverage because of the systems that you had with data uh, all over the place. Um, I'll show you another dashboard 
which puts together information that you get from a match, information that you get from the commercial point of view, and what further analysis can you do? All right, so this one's not as flashy, no uh, fancy graphs in here. But what I wanted to bring to your attention was, for example, if we looked at this uh, West Ham game, for example, we've got total revenue of 3,303 pounds. But you can also do much more analysis. You can look at the spend per head. How do we get to spend per head? Well, it's because we already had the total attendance against West Ham. So now you're able to get to the nitty gritty information that perhaps you weren't able to do because you had information coming from four different areas or just took you really long to actually get there. Furthermore, you can drill down a bit to see what's behind that 3,000 pounds. And you can actually filter, for example, we'll pick sales items. So sales items is what we looked at before. How many packet of crisps did we sell against West Ham? How many pints did we sell against West Ham? Well, if you really want to know, the information is here. Against West Ham, you can f look at the breakdown, and that was a number that we saw earlier, 483 pounds uh, and two pence. I don't know why we've got decimals for pints of beer. They don't normally sell them like that. And you can then see the quantity of actually how much that you've sold in terms of the units. But then this is what we talk about in terms of the power of one. Your information is readily available. You can make better strategic decisions based on the information that you have, and it's all in the system. So whether you've integrated it from a third-party vendor, whether you've put it in, typing, uh, typing the data in directly, or whether the information comes from another part of Workday. So Workday doesn't only deal with financials, but it also deals with HCM data, like Richard pointed out, payroll data, absence data, talent and, uh, and performance, uh, and et cetera. So at this point, your commercial directors, your financial directors are going to ask your financial analysts, why don't we sell more beer against West Ham? Why don't we sell more beer against Swansea? Can you tell us what we can do to actually improve our sales performance at the concourse, improve our sales performance online? It's now easy as a financial anal analyst at the business to break down my data and come up with some decisions or some, at least some direction to have a meaningful conversation and some strategic, strategic direction actually can be met by your, from your FDs, your analysts, your commercial directors and whatnot. So this is kind of what we wanted to showcase today. Um, it's a very, very powerful tool in terms of what you can do with the data that you have. And at the end of the day, you only really get the real benefits depending on what you've put into the system. And as any system, you know, people who are here who have dealt with systems in the past, I certainly worked with some pretty terrible systems in the past where, if you excuse my <laughs> language, but if you put in, you get out. I'm sure, I'm sure you know what I mean. So if we go back to the slides, please, Ben. I'd like to just end on a uh, comment or quote, if you like, from the work that we're currently doing at Southampton Football Club. So this was the managing director, current uh, managing director of the football club. I just wanted to highlight just one of the, uh, one of the comments, which is, which is down there, about PwC have brought a huge amount of knowledge and best practice to the implementation. So again, we have quite a global audience in terms of the amount of work that we do. And when you're working with a football club, we don't merely look at football performance on the pitch because the back office supports a lot of these functions. We also look at the tax implications. We look at their human resource implications. There's recently now a, a need for companies over, who employ over 250 employees to report on gender pay gap. You also have the same for national, national minimum wage. So all of this put together as an ERP for a company that's growing, that's ambitious, is why you would want to implement Workday with PwC. Thank you for listening. And uh, if you've got any questions, do come to our store 181, we're out there. Thank you.